I'm Ryan. And I'm Allie. After falling in love, we decided to ride bikes across America. Collecting love advice along the way. This is Love Cycles. No No flatties, no no whammies, no no crashies. Ladies and gentlemen, you know how I've mentioned Jocelyn at Trek? This is Jocelyn at Trek! Can you believe it? Hi! Hi, and we're going on a field trip today of the Trek headquarters. Yep. Thanks so much for having us. Thanks for coming. We're so excited to be here. Welcome to Waterloo. Yay! (laughs) It's so exciting to be here at Trek. Allie, what are you doing? I'm drying off my bike tires. You're drying off your bike tires? Oh. Yeah, it's, it's raining out there. Ride bikes, have fun, feel good. When I was a kid, I loved going on field trips. And this right now is probably the coolest field trip you could ever go on. We're gonna take our bikes back to Mitch and Mitch is gonna work on them, get them all souped up for the rest of the ride. Mitch! How's it going? Oh, hey, are you Mitch? Are you gonna fix the bikes? Nice to meet you. Hey, I love your videos. Thank you so much, appreciate it. We love making them. This is our friend Mitch. I've never met him until today, and now it's fun to put a, put a face to the, to the man, the legend. He's the one that's worked on all my Trek bikes, so thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, cheers. <laughs> Jocelyn, what are we gonna do now? Wait, what's going on? What's, what's happening? <laughs> We're gonna get a, a tour. A tour. Of Trek Bicycle. <laughs> yeah. With all the stuff. Look at all that stuff, all right. And this is our tour guide, what's your name? My name's Jason. Jason, yes. um, let's, let's do this. I'm here in Waterloo, Waterloo, Wisconsin, the thriving metropolis. Waterloo, Wisconsin, right? 3,334 people stands the worldwide headquarters of the Trek Bicycle Corporation, right? This building is a little over 224,000 square feet. We have roughly 900 employees here, and uh, globally we have about 2,200 employees, and we're doing business in over 80 countries, right? So people come out here and they say, What are you doing in Waterloo? <laughs> Right? <laughs> and what do you tell them? I tell them, well, there's a great story behind that, right? So, I mean, had we just traveled 20 miles to the west, we'd be in Madison. Had we just gone 60 miles to the east, we'd be in Milwaukee. We have two founders. One from Madison, the other from Milwaukee. We're right in the middle, right? So my version of the history of track, uh, we were born off of um, uh, uh, fish fries and old fashions. Right, because the two of them would meet at a supper club right outside of Waterloo. This is in the 70s, and Schwinn was king. Right, so they wanted to bring to market high-end, hand-braised, uh, lugged um, touring and racing frames. Right. Well, they had to find a place to do this because once they decided they were going to make the bike frames, they had to decide whose garage they were going to wreck. <laughs> right, because you can imagine. Um, Welding, steel frames, painting them, it's messy, right? Who's going to drive from Madison to Milwaukee, Milwaukee to Madison? Um, those kind of things. So they found a carpet warehouse for sale here in Waterloo. Uh, we call it the barn. Um, it's a little more romantic than calling it the carpet warehouse. And um, so we like to say we were born in a barn. It's neat because if you see it from one angle, it's green. And if you see it from the other angle, it's purple. Yeah. Oh wow, look at that. Right? That's awesome. And this bike right here belonged to Jens Voigt. He rode it this year in the Dirty Kanza. And that's a cool off-road gravel race in Kansas. And it has the actual dirt from the race. This is Jens Voigt, the Shut Up Legs Jens Voigt legend. Shut Up Legs. Shut Up Legs. Ooh, climbing wall. Look at that. We've got on-site clinic that's focused on holistic care, so acupuncture, massage therapy, chiropractic care. This is the um, World Cyclocross Championship course, right here. Right there, out the window. Out the window. You can kind of see where there's some mowings where they come down and go up. So 18 years here at Trek, I have never parked my car in the parking lot for work. Um, I have skied, snowshoed, and skateboarded to work. In Um, addition to riding my bike. Primarily ride my bike <laughs> back and forth. I feel like a kid in a candy store here. This is like my dream come true coming to a bike factory. And this is a fun fact. My very first bike, I saved up all my lawn mowing money and bought a Trek 8000. And that bike was the reason why I fell in love with biking, specifically mountain biking. And uh, yeah, it's fun to be here at the mothership and see where it all started. Five times stronger than steel. Uh, strong in the direction of... Yeah. 
strung in the direction of the fibers, right? So this is a woven piece of carbon. This is, people think, when they think carbon, they see this, right? So these are woven, strong, yeah. strong, strong, oh, yeah. strong, but none on the 45. So when we get our carbon for a lot of our components uh, frame buildup, it's one directional, right? Yeah. We cut plus or minus 45s, uh, zeros, 90s, and then we layer it. So we're able to build in the characteristics that we need. I'm not sure. And the weave is an important part. The weave is, what I've been told with the weave parts yeah. is they fit better into smaller um, like crevices, yeah. right? This is the preform uh, pieces to an Amanda SLR uh, 10. And uh, they've been uh, run through a process of layering the carbon, uh, run through a textile cutter that cuts out these preform pieces. It gets made into the lug, which is seat stay. Then from that, it comes out, it gets weighed again. It gets written on the piece. Now it's, a, it's written on there because it's a visual indicator. It's within the parameters it needs to be to go to the next stage, which would be when it gets bonded um, together into a frame. Thank you, Jason. You're, You're awesome. Welcome. You're the man. We'll right be on. back another day. Perfect. So a lot of the stuff in this factory cannot be filmed because it's top secret. It makes sense. This is kind of like the Willy Wonka factory of bikes. You know what I'm saying? World of pure imagination. What are we doing now, Jocelyn? We're going to eat in our little grill spot out here outside of our office. Yeah. So, Jake Foley yeah. on the grill. What's up? Uh, what do you think about all this trekness? Yeah, it's awesome. It's really cool to see how our bikes were made and see the people who are making them. I also love looking at the history, looking at the old bikes and the bikes to come and yeah, seeing how they've changed and evolved and continue to evolve over time. Here's a fun fact about Trek. They actually have their own watermelon garden and they supply 13% of the world's watermelons right here at Trek. Very cool. That's not true. <laughs> oh yeah. There you go. Looking good, Mitch. Awesome. Thank you so much, my man. High five. You're welcome. <laughs> he cleaned up all of our mud from I Wyoming. <laughs> Look at that, a new chain, new derailleur. Yeah, I can't wait to get these babies back on the road. Whoa, what is this? It's like chocolate chips, honey, oatmeal, it's a lot of good stuff. These are fresh out of the oven, they're so good. Jocelyn, you are number one. <laughs> Mm. It has been so awesome coming here and visiting the Trek HQ. Meeting everyone, connecting with them, seeing the process. They have taken such good care of us and nourished our bodies, tuned up our bikes, feeling really psyched to hit the road again, and really grateful to have gotten to stop by and connect with the Trek family. Love you guys. And to meet Jocelyn in real life. Yeah. So Jocelyn here is the one that uh, helped make this thing happen. Back in January, we talked about this ride when it was just going to be me. And then I met Allie in March and I was like, I don't want to leave Allie for two months. And Jocelyn's like, well, why don't you bring her along? We like women on bikes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. This has been so incredible. You are the best. Seriously. I can't oh, thank you yes. enough from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you so You're much. Allie, get over here. Let's have a group hug over here. Yeah. <laughs> Jocelyn has hooked us up with everything today, and now we have an extra special surprise. Check this place out. We get to stay in this mansion. Oh my God, this is so cool. This place is called Mansion Hill. What's uh -huh. the history behind it? Mansion Hill Inn was where the builder or architect of our state capitol, he lived here and would use this observatory on the side to check on how construction was wow. going um, at the capitol. Um, the really like how did this end up being a part of the Trek family is yeah. that you know Trek is all about hospitality and welcoming people into our family like you guys have learned today and we wanted a place to call our own to help people lay their heads when they come to visit oh man look at this place what have we gotten ourselves into we have ourselves some very luxurious accommodations here um complete with Fireplace, just in case it gets chilly. This is where the magic happens. Oh man, that's a lot bigger than our tent. Uh, we could put our tent on top of this bed. Um, what else do we have in here? We have not one, but two big screen TVs in case Ryan and I don't agree on the TV show. Yeah. Uh, plenty of cabinetry for stuff. Yeah, look at this old furniture, old books. Loving it. All right, let's go to the next room. Yes, there is a next room, ladies and gentlemen. 
Dun, da, da, da. Oh, we have our own couch. Hi. Oh, robes. I robes. love robes. Oh, she does love like robes. Silk. Mm. Oh, and uh, look at this. This oh. is like an arch ceiling in here. Welcome. Wow. Oh, this is a real flower. Put it in your hair. Put it in my hair. We're going to leave it here until I will put it in my hair tomorrow. Wow, look at this. I've never stayed in a hotel this nice you in my have life. Party in this shower. Not yeah, so there's a lot of people could fit in this shower. Let's see. Yeah, we could fit a lot of people in here for sure. I know this is a really nice room, and we probably shouldn't jump on the beds, but we have to. So, Mansion Hill, Mansion Hill. Thank you so much, Jocelyn and Trek, and everybody in Madison. Madison has been really, really good to us. We're gonna sleep in so late, we might just not get on our bikes tomorrow. Who knows? We are here in the lovely home of Keith and Karen. They've taken us in for a few days. Last night we went and checked out the world record, Guinness Book of World Records, largest cheese board. I love cheese, and since coming to Wisconsin, We've eaten a bag of cheese curds, cheese sandwiches, cheesecake, cheese soup, and now we're about to uh, be a part of the world's record largest cheese board ever made. I'm excited to eat every single cheese, and maybe I won't make it out the other side, but that's cool. I died eating cheese, not so bad. Now we're gonna get a little Guinness Book of World Records love advice. So you two have been together 42 years, raised two children, and you seem to have a really beautiful relationship. You still walk down the street holding hands <laughs> and We're I, that way. <laughs> I can't wait to hear what kind of advice you have for us. What would you tell us, a new couple who wants to make things last? Karen, Don't first. stop trying to have wild crazy sex. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. I like that one. <laughs> well, you know when you're young, what I call new love, it's just a whole whirlwind of wild sex and raising babies and getting your kids to college and now it's just like a, a quiet calm sex and it's a quiet calm life but it's still nice to have wild crazy sex and there's good days and bad days and I'm going to quote my favorite singer Pink from her song True Love for your bad days at the same time I want to hug you I want to wrap my hands around your neck you're an <laughs> asshole but I still love you you're the only love I've ever known <laughs> There's Keith. Uh, well, my response to that is, is her dad told me, like the day before we got married, he said, do whatever you want. She'll get over it in a couple days. <laughs> and, of course, he meant that within reason, but it was, it was really good advice. And this is from a man who had seven daughters, and, you know, that was probably how he survived. But I think what he meant is that you really need to even though you obviously have to make compromise in a relationship, um, you also have to be your own person. And uh, there are times you just have to do what you need to do, you know. And I think that helps for long longevity. I think it's important to not only be lovers, but to be friends. And it's a friendship, you know, that really holds you together, you know, in the hard times. The other thing is it never, it's just constantly changing, you know. Um, I mean, it's up and down and up and down. And especially maybe for guys, you know, you think, well, everything's fine, but wham, it's not. You know, suddenly something blindsides you, so. I want what I want when I want it. <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying, she's up and down and up and down and up and down. And, and I know I am. And he's used to it. And he knows. He knows when to leave me alone. And he knows when to go to the cabin alone and leave me here. Or I go to the cabin alone sometimes. We're still friends. I know a ton of people from Wisconsin. And you're kind of, you have the reputation of like Canadians. You're super nice, like overly nice. Are you guys always this nice? <laughs> To strangers or to each other? To, to each other. Usually, we're, yeah. We're pretty nice. I think what I find out there's, you have to look into yourself. You know, like there's some some days that I don't like myself. You know, so how am I going to expect that Karen likes me? You know, so then I just kind of realize, like, you know, just just realize what you're saying or thinking or take a walk or take a bike ride or, you know, work it out, go swimming. I go swimming all the time up here in 
you yeah, know. you have to pay attention to each other. I mean, I know when he's going to have a quiet day. I just know. And so, and it's not just the fact that he needs coffee before he <laughs> can, you know, motate in the morning, but just if he's going to have a quiet day, we might go a whole day without hardly speaking. And that's okay. Quiet's okay. It's not uncomfortable silence. It's just yeah. quiet. Yeah. 